Okay, let's talk about Nudge. And the way I use Nudge is to have it tell the user to basically force them to use my erase install workflow for updating the computer. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, Nudge is much more complicated if you've never used it. And I'm not using it as well as people who are better at this than I am. But I do have it functional for my needs, and I'm going to demonstrate the way I've set it up today in its first version. In the future, it will get better, and I will um, have a better workflow. So first I'm showing you a dialog box I actually use so that the whole purpose of this is when the users don't self-initiate an update, they're standard users on Apple Silicon, I have this dialog box that pops up for them and says, click on this box, uh, you gotta update. And when they do that, a command is triggered. And I have another video on this, it's in the Mac admin playlist. But this is the command that's executed, which goes to my JAMP policy ID for the policy that uses the erase install script to update the computer, prompt the user for their uh, password that's tied to their volume account, right? And this is also available in self-service. When I'm building these out, I have them in testing and utilities, but now that it's production, I can take it out of testing and just leave it in utilities. So I'm going to save this out. Now, that helps me get to about, you know, let's say 10% of users update on their own. The next 50%, uh, so that it gets to 60 yard line, will update with that dialog box. That's where Nudge comes in. This makes it even more intrusive. It, it's really telling them to, to update. And, and you'll see what that looks like on the user interface at the end of this video. You can go there now if you want. So here's the GitHub repository for Nudge. It's really cool. I'm going to give it a thumbs up and some of these other emojis. You should do the same. And this is where I downloaded all four of those PKGs, Nudge version 1.1.9, the launch agent, the logger, and the suite. There's a lot here. So if you're using Nudge for the first time, block a lot of time on your calendar to do lab testing with the software. Additionally, there's a post install script. I've copied and pasted this into a text editor so I can use it to, to get my version zero of this software running in my environment in a way that works for the fleet of computers I'm managing in this specific Jamf software server. So I'm just going to scroll through this a little bit so you can see some of the things it's doing with its global variables where you have um, operating system versions and timers. That's a big thing Nudge does is it says, it, it pops up on a on a, uh, a user or um, sorry let me find my words it pops up every half hour by default and it shows how much time the user has to update and if they don't do it in that amount of time other things can happen so you just have a lot more control over that person's computer and you know nudging them to update consistently so First things first, you got to get the, the software on the computers. So I, this isn't the cleanest configuration. I'll just start by saying that, but it's it's what I'm doing uh, now. I install all four of the Nudge packages on the computers that need to be updated from a major version update. So in this case, we're going from Monterey to Ventura, from 12 to 13 in Mac OS terms. And the trigger here is basically every trigger <laughs> um, once per computer. So I, I really want these packages to get, get installed and then reinstall if they don't go. The scope is all these our operating system versions that aren't 13. So that covers all my clients that are on the old system. We also got it in self-service. It was in testing and utilities. We can keep it just in utilities now. Um, but I'll, I'll trigger these in on my lab computer during testing from self-service to see what happens. So once those are installed, you can do some testing in terminal on your test device. I'm not going to do that in this tutorial, uh, but you should do that. And maybe I'll make another one. If, if that would be helpful to see me test these in terminal, 
put that in the comments below and, and I'll consider doing that if, if it's useful for helping people learn more about that. Okay, there's a configuration profile component of this and I realize I'm going a little fast here. So I'm gonna slow this down. All right, 25% slower with matrix transitions. This is where the rubber meets the road on this one. You really need to have all this set up right. So preference domain is here. You should be able to copy and paste that from GitHub. And then these preference properties, you can set up the way you want them and click on that property list or P list preview and it will show you those, those kind of um, property list values that will evaluate to true or false in a key value pair structure. What do we got first? Operational features. configured so read this documentation on the github side to, to learn more about what each one of these things do um, take notes, you know, again, spend a lot of time learning about this. Uh, when it comes to the aggressive user experience, I keep this disabled or when disabled. So I've set it to true. So nudge will not hide all non-acceptable application bundle IDs after the requirement required installation date or deferrals are allowed. And the reason I haven't done that is because I don't have an acceptable, acceptable application bundle ID for self-service and the boxes it generates for the erase install script. So if I had this set to false and it locked out all the other applications, the user wouldn't be able to update after the deadline. So that's something for a future version of my own configuration. If you know how I can do that very simply, you're like a super expert watching this for fun in Mac system administration and the Jamf software server, please put that in the comments below. Call me out on, on how easy that is to do or hard. All right, uh, same with aggressive full screen user experience. So we have not hide to true and then aggressive full screen experience We actually have this one set to false. So so it will blur the background. And so what's gonna happen when that, that happens, it, it will effectively lock people out of their computers and they, will, um, they won't be able to use them until they're updated and I'll have to remove them from the scope of this configuration profile uh, or update this computer configuration profile value to uh, from false to true so that their uh, screen doesn't blur background when they're past the, the window to update. Uh, so I've given them a lot of time. They, they have a couple weeks and if they, they don't get it done and I have a small enough group of them, I'm, you know, I should be, if my models are correct, I should be down to less than 10 users who get locked out. And so when they get locked out, I can handle that volume. But if you have uh, more users than you can handle, you know you, you need to be careful with these settings. You need to test them and know your user base, know what's gonna happen. Nothing should be a surprise in your administration of these systems. So we got our asynchronous software updates set to true. For attempt to fetch major update, that's set to true. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to normal speed because we're going a little too slow now. Back at normal speed. We can enforce the minor update. We can have our version requirements, our time. So all these things are gonna show up on that dialog box that user sees. And um, it's really important that these be right. So 
that is our first two parts are getting the the nudge software installed on client computers and then getting the nudge configuration profile installed with the json workflow now one thing i'm going to point out here is that the action button for the policy goes to this sorry for the configuration profile the action button for the configuration pro profile opens a url and that url is the policy for the erase install script that will update the computer that will prompt the user to update the computer and that's that action ID there because this is an M1 client that's a standard user account. They don't have L admin rights, so they're not just going to be able to authenticate that volume um, in, in the way they would if, if they had admin rights. So erase install in, in my environment, I believe, is the best way to do this. Uh, it, it works really well, and it's got all the values set up the way I want them to be. Okay, so now we need the launch agent and that's where the this another policy comes in so and in a cleaner configuration than mine and I'll do this in version 2 is to uh, have the you know not install all four packages in the first policy so again we got a bunch of triggers for this execution frequencies ongoing there's our nudge uh, package there and then here's our script and it's nudge post install yeah i have a version for my script and then the date it was put in and now we'll take a look at that script i spent a long time probably three hours testing different versions of this script until i was ready to put it into production I suggest people probably spend even more time than that, depending on the size of your fleet. And uh, when you do put it into production, uh, don't don't send it to every client. You know, roll that out slowly and in a controlled manner. This is a long script with a lot going on in it, and take the time to read it line by line, understand what's going on. So a lot of the things on the dialog box that the user sees um, are set in here. So my update URL, if they click that, it's going to take them to the Google document I have that tells the user how the update works. So that's what that does. Now on line 405, we can see the action button. They click the action button it opens self-service. It opens the policy that, uh, um, which is our race, our, our erase install update policy, and prompts the user for their password that will authenticate their token on their volume, and then start the update process. Allow it to happen, and so so it's this the same erase install update process just using nudge to nudge the user to do that on a timetable. And that's the beauty and power of nudge. It, it most simply speaking, it, it gives the user a timetable. And it can be, there, there's a lot of customization settings here. Um, you, can, you can really utilize this script uh, in, in, a, in a nice way. So we saw I made a change in the script. I saw a, a typo I made where there wasn't a good space. So I'm going to save this out. I'm going to show you how we update the version of the script in the JSS. First, we'll look at the scope of this policy. We can see it's scoped to all the computers that need to be updated. Also have it in self-service. Take it out of testing now. Just leave it in utilities because uh, it is in production. So just clean that up a little bit. And now we'll go to our system settings, computer management, scripts, got nudge right up here on the top we will edit it update our version number and our date and now we can highlight all the text in the script delete it we have the new version on the clipboard paste that in save it out I like to scan it just a little bit 
make sure it's there. It's not gonna, I'm not gonna just break everything while I'm doing this. Go back to my policy, open it up again, and make sure version five's pulled through. So there it is, version five. Okay, so now we can look and see what that looks like on the user side. All right, so this is some not the best quality cell phone video that shows what the user sees when they see the dialog box. So we can see on the left side, they have the version number and days to update, the required version, the current version, um, everything they need to do kind of bare bones to update. And we click update now, it opens self-service, goes to our erase install policy, which is set to reinstall, or sorry, it doesn't reinstall. It's been a long day. It updates and it's going to prompt this user for their password from their volume token, from their token volume, and they can type that in and update their computer. At this point, the update's working the exact same way as it would if the user had triggered it themselves through self-service, which is the goal. And now we can see the DEP notify, downloading OS, and the process is starting. It takes about two hours. And that's how I've configured Nudge to nudge users to update. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.